Well, how are you guys doing? This episode is sponsored by 10,000. Okay, so the, the, the American state of our social media, I guess you would say, over the last week has been kind of wild. Everybody's been talking about a balloon. I haven't brought it up one time on this episode because it's a freaking balloon. But I, I waited to dive into this thing because this, 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 it's just strange. Okay, China's calling it um, a weather balloon. We call it a spy balloon. I'm not really entirely sure. It doesn't really make too much sense to me. Okay, 10 years ago, America was uh, America's military was literally measuring... Okay, measuring the satellite imagery we were using on the ground down to like the millimeter of a pixel. So why is China flying around a balloon with a satellite on the bottom? It's, that's kind of strange, okay? I don't know. I'm sure some more will come out of it, but this thing was like the size of three school buses. I couldn't even imagine how big the balloon was carrying it. That is the satellite itself was three buses long. That's huge. I know Blinken was actually supposed to be going to China for an important meeting, but decided to actually cancel the meeting clearly due to this happening. It kind of pissed off the Chinese just a tad bit. I'm also not sure why the Chinese needed to fly satellites on balloon. It's just, it just, it's something I'm not fully... I, I just really can't wrap my hand around it. It's really goofy. Uh, they also re- overreacted uh, a bit because they, they said that, uh, oh God, why are we even talking about a balloon? Why am I talking about a balloon right now, Charles? It just blows my mind. Anyway, uh, they said we overreacted and we seriously violated international practice by shooting this thing down. Okay, this is coming from China, by the way. Okay, they've been flying fighter jets over Taiwan's airspace for how many years now? And the Chinese are currently engaging in the fastest military buildup since World War II, just so everybody is aware if you aren't already. And I'm personally not, not worried about China China and their ability to beat our military. It's not going to happen. The only thing they can do is spread this a little bit thin on one side of the con- country, or excuse me, on the earth, and we're on the other side of the earth. That might be a little bit of a problem. We'll talk about it here later on. But I don't know. I, we might be one of the only countries that would allow this to actually fly over the entirety of the country and then shoot it down. I get it. They're worried of some sort of like civilian casualties. I don't know. This thing probably should have been taken out earlier. That's just me. I thought it was weak. Doesn't really matter. The question still hasn't been answered. What were you Canadians doing? You allowed this thing to fly over your airspace and into ours. Like, what the heck? Undetected? Oh, my God. The Chinese uh, foreign ministry has also announced that due to their trust and cooperation with the Russian Federation increasing, they're now going to prepare to engage in a strategic partnership between the two countries. Okay. I really wish I had this written down. Okay, or remember the episodes at least when I had said this because I feel like a broken record at this point. It's just over and over. Does anybody feel like we're seriously getting to the point where we're like seeing the buildup on each side militarily and this it's just like a spring getting tightened and wound and wound and wound. Well, it's about to erupt in something much larger that's, that's, that's bigger than Ukraine. Like just think about the amount of tensions right now we're seeing between Taiwan and China and that's going to spill over at some point. Then we got to go help Taiwan and then we're still helping Ukraine over here inside of our fighting the Russians. It's just like what? Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I am crazy. I don't know. Maybe it's because I look at this stuff every day. I'm like, my God, what is going on in the world? I have no idea. By the way, you know what? Germany. Germany is going to be sending 88 Leopard 1s to Ukraine, by the way. Just so you are aware, where, 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 they all have to be repaired. So not only are they sending the, the Leopard 1s, which is which is great, 88 of them, it's going to cost them $100 million to actually fix all of them before they can be sent off. So we're seeing a build of Russian forces for this upcoming offensive, by the way which I personally believe is going to take place around the one-year mark of this war. They're so tied in two days, and, and they, they love their, their history, and they have to hit these one days and these marks and everything like that. I think it's going to happen on the 24th of February. Like down in Mariupol, the Russians right now have staged tens of thousands of new troops into this area of the last week or so. I don't think we're looking at just like a one area type deal where the Russians are going to try to push through. Okay, I think it's going to be spanned across multiple fronts along this entire eastern to northeastern edge of the country. I really do. I think we're going to see that within the next couple weeks. I could be crazy. I could be incorrect. I am human. I make mistakes, but I look at this stuff every single day. For the most part, I look at it literally every single day, so I kind of have an idea of what's going on and where people are going. I mean, the, the rules of being a patriot inside of Russia are, are kind of straightforward and kind of simple, right? Sure, I guess this could be true to a certain extent if you're inside of a country and it's being invaded and your only hope and your last bit of hope is to maintain your freedom is to fight and die for your country. I get it, okay? But honestly, people who are are cowards aren't going to be doing this in the first place. So you're never going to get them to really fight even if they are there. They're not it's just not going to happen. 
Okay, they're not going to die for themselves, let alone their entire country or their family. Like that. It's just the way some people are. It's what some how some are built. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Well, there, there's so many ways that, that that you can actually an individual can help their country without having to fight directly inside of war. Like women inside of World War II, for instance, were just as important in the efforts back in the day because they were actually building damn near everything the men were using to fight overseas. And this is this was pretty much just another Russian in a warm office giving his opinion as to why more men need to lay down their lives as he sits around and talks to a camera while he's not getting. Is his feet sloshing around in snow or the muck or having to take a piss in a hole or poop in the lie. I don't even you know what I used to poop in lie all the time. Poop in lie as in the, the white stuff you throw inside of a hole. So it, anyway, it doesn't really matter. Ah, what I'm going to, I'm actually, you know what? I almost went down a, a, a rabbit hole, literally down a hole right there, which wouldn't have been very pleasant. All right. You guys see these things right here. You guys ever have problem with chafing when you guys are running or doing anything like that or any type of act outside activity? These things right here, you see these? These are going to prevent that. You, you guys don't want to get monkey butt. No one likes that. I don't like anything about that. Like if I have to walk and my inner thighs are going to get chafed or if I want to run a really long run and my inner thighs are going to get chafed because I'm not wearing the proper stuff or I'm just wearing boxers or I'm free balling, that's not what I want to do. 10,000 is a men's performance active wear brand built for serious training. Every day faster, every day stronger, every day better than yesterday. 10,000 design with function, durability, and minimalism in mind. Gear should function at the highest level, last forever, and go unnoticed so you can focus on getting back to your workout. At the heart of 10,000 is stoic dedication to continuous improvement. So I know a lot of you guys might have been inside the military a while and you'd be like 15 miles deep into a road march and you just get the most absolute terrible rash going between your your your, your back hole and your front hole, okay? In that area, you're like, God bless this hurts. Uh, you'd be 17 miles deep and you're like, I'm done. Why? Why do I keep doing this? I, I've done this. 10,000 has been there and the, the men have been there in the same spot and that's why they've made things comfortable and functional and it makes it to where you, it just kind of disappears. You guys, you know you want that, right? You want to focus on your workout, not your gear, okay? This is the way to go. The tactical shorts from 10,000 will do exactly that. The tactical shorts are truly as comfortable as they are functional. They're so easy. they got the liner on the inside. They keep your nether regions tight. Everything is good. If you guys like to run, if you like to ruck, if you just like to work out, these are going to be the shorts for you. So no bullshit guys. 10,000 works with top strength and dearth athletes to co-design, test, and develop their gear so you know it's heavily vetted before they just show up at your door. Kid up now and get 15% off your purchase. Go to 10,000.cc, enter code ROB. It'll be linked at the very top of the description. All you guys got to go to is T-E-N-T-H-O-U-S-A-N-D dot C-C. That is 10,000.cc to save 15% off when you use code ROB. 10,000.cc. See, they offer free shipping, free returns, and a lifetime guarantee. Now get your ass out there. Use the high-quality stuff you guys can. Best fitting and most comfortable training shorts you've ever worn from 10,000. It'll be linked at the very top of the description. Now, I'm also not one to, to follow celebrity takes, like every, especially here in America, because honestly, they're mostly just going to be trash. But, but you know, you know what? I, I watched a chunk of an interview with an, an apparently very large, famous actress over there inside of Russia who is voicing her take on the war. Okay, and unlike America, she's actually praising the troops. А так и есть. Ну, вы ничего не придумаешь. Знаешь, я думаю, что это вот закончится очень скоро. И прям вот вот как вот с этой эпидемией она закончилась ни с того ни с сего. Так и это закончится, поскольку да сейчас смешно, наверное, буду выглядеть, но неважно. Америка уже нацелилась на Кита... с Китаем война у них должна начаться, так им кажется, за Тайвань они будут воевать. Украина вообще им нафиг не нужна будет. Они скинут ее просто вот в секунду в одну. It is kind of funny though that she she somewhat touched on something that I've said it a few times with regards to the war and time is on their side. So imagine if China did it up opening up some something on Taiwan, okay? And we were forced here in America to pick sides and pick where we're going to put all of our efforts. I know this is going to sound super crazy or we're going to sound like I'm fear-mongering you into some, thinking some sort of way, but just hear me out. You have Russia, okay? You have China. Basically, I'm going to say two separate sides of the world, but they're, they, they're not really... I mean, for us, they are, okay? And it's closer and closer they are getting, and as time goes on, they're, they're just growing like this. They I mean, this announced it publicly, they're getting closer, okay? What if they're playing this entire time, or maybe they start to evolve, okay? Maybe it might be evolving, because that's what happens, you know? What if, what if they want to split America's mind into two different fronts? So this is a random thought for you guys. I unfortunately had to li listen to another eight minutes or so of this interview just to see if there was any real substance, and thankfully, 
There wasn't. You guys don't have to listen to any of it. She basically just went on and talked about how Putin's going to live, or she wants Putin to live for another 800 years, excuse me, and would like to see the fruits of his labor play out. Yes, she wants him to live for 800 years and for his fruits of his labor. It's just kind of goofy. It's just like, blah, bukkake for Putin is pretty much what what's pre- it's pretty much what I've gotten out of that. Now, at this point, I think both parties are almost to an agreement, okay, that there is no need for negotiating because I believe, I take that back, I don't believe either party is willing to lose. <laughs> There's not a single pe- person on earth that's going to say either one wants to lose. i said this before many times as well. I don't think America is in the position to lose because, for one, we're the most powerful country on the planet when it comes to military. Speaking, Russia has everything to lose here because... In the sense, they don't want to lose their image. They don't want to get crushed tremendously, so they will do just about anything not to let that happen. Мы с 24 февраля не пытаемся договариваться, и мы закончили разговаривать. Мы пытались договариваться да. до этого. И если ты помнишь, помнишь, мы даже сидели дома, спорили там большой компанией об этом, когда декабрь, кажется, это был, соответственно, 21 года, ну, за два месяца до начала спецоперации, когда наш президент сделал последнюю попытку, и в данном случае не крайнюю, как принято говорить mm-hmm. на фронте и много где, а именно последнюю попытку договариваться, когда были предложены окончательные условия именно договоренности. Не договоренности конкретно по Донбассу. Это, вот, это вот то, что называли ультиматум. Ультиматум, в конечно, да. да. Угу. А конкретные условия того, что ну, без особой надежды, как я понимаю, договориться, именно потому что договариваться не с кем. Но, тем не менее, это была отчетливая последняя попытка. Попытка была предсказуемым образом проигнорирована, и случилось то, что случилось. Сейчас мы ни с кем не договариваемся, мы просто добиваемся защиты наших людей, наших интересов, нашей страны, нашего мира, нашего представления о мире теми способами, которые нам остались, когда были исчерпаны возможности договариваться. Ага. Мы вынуждены идти до последнего, потому что, как сказал наш руководитель, и это же не шутка была, Он же всерьез сказал, зачем нам мир, в котором нет России? Незачем. И мне незачем. Мне не хочется жить в мире, в котором нет России. Зачем это нужно вообще? Да. Now this agreement that Putin was actually trying to put in place was one that was never going to happen. They plan this invasion of the country well in advance. And in most don't recall, they actually started troop buildup on the border of Ukraine in the spring of 2021 and claiming it to be a military exercise. What she is claiming right here, by the way, is negotiations prior to, to Putin like doing everything. He was wanting NATO to pull back all their troops and weapons from the eastern side of Europe and bar Ukraine from ever joining NATO. It's nothing more than a cover to go after Ukraine. That's all this is. Because right when they enter the country, like, okay, now we're going after Nazis. And now they're going after, like, Satanists or whatever the, whatever they're talking about now. Like, it just, nothing really, nobody really knows, and you're going to hear them say this in a second. No one really knows entirely what the end goal is, what the agenda is, and what they're fighting for. Конечно, любой конфликт Глубок, заканчивается да, посетила, да. дипломатией. Конечно, вопрос как и на каких условиях. Так mm-hmm. вот, первое, если эти договоренности будут то, что мы и так хотели. Мы же не знаем, чего мы хотим-то. И правильно делаем, что мы а не мы объявляем. мы не знаем, что мы хотим? Ну, мы знаем, слух не говорим. Мы догадываемся, слух не говорим, да? Второе, почему мы можем пойти на эти договоренности, это сценарий плохой. И, надеюсь, он не сбыточный, не дай бог. Ну, анализируя... Я понимаю, что мы можем пойти на договоренности, не устраивающие нас полностью, но являющиеся компромиссом, если мы будем понимать, что для для достижения полностью устраивающих нас результатов у нас уже нет сил. Нет сил. Нет возможностей, что жертва, которой мы достигнем больших результатов, превысит Может быть, они на жертву, это как раз рассчитывают? Превысит жертву, подразумеваемую самим этим компромиссом. Да, да, да. Вот сейчас господин Макрон да. фактически воюет с нами. Бербок права была. Европа воюет с нами. Да. Он отправляет технику, которая уничтожает наших мирных граждан, наших солдат, но руками украинцев. There is going to be a point inside of this war where the Russians will be forced at some point to the table. I have no doubt. Like, they're, it's bound to happen. Like, wars do not go on forever. And this one, by, by the way, is far from over. Uh, but, but claiming that, that all of Europe is at war with Russia is, of course, stupid. Because currently, the only military fighting inside of Ukraine 
is the Ukrainian military. Okay, like how much, how much, how much weaker was the Ukrainian military from the Russians a year ago? Okay, like in the sense of having the proper equipment to fight and and, and stuff like that. But but as well as everybody knows, they've received so much munitions from all these countries. But that doesn't make that doesn't make these other countries at war with Russia. Like that, that, that does not make them at war with Russia. All the West did was give Ukrainians the ability to defend themselves with of, of what is theirs. Okay. It, but that's clearly an issue for the Russians because they thought they were going to come in in this three day war now turn into a year long war. Можно, можно вот уточнить, я в какой-то веке согласна с Майклом, вы говорите, у нас есть возможности разгромить ВСУ, а почему мы тогда до сих пор их не разгромили? А вот это другой вопрос. Вы Это думаете, вопрос к президенту, говорят, почему и когда он пора решит, начинать, да. что нам нужно начинать. Он же сказал, мы на полную мощь воевать не начинаем. <coughs> его слова, его. <coughs> У него есть причины, по каким он до сих пор не отдал команду нашей <coughs> армии воевать на полную мощь? Наверное, есть. И, наверное, он не считает Я нужным думаю, нам что с вами это сейчас объяснить. обижать нашу Такой. армию. Армия наша да. воюет блестяще. Воюет блестяще. Гибнут ребята. Но, извините, но воюет не вся армия и не все средства. Это мы тоже хорошо знаем. And by the way, this has to be one of the worst takes on this war I've ever seen thus far. Apparently, the war wizard himself, Putin, has decided not to throw all of his might at Ukraine. And he's sitting on some special powers that have not been unleashed yet. That's really strange. Uh, this guy's basically spit on all the faces of families who actually lost their sons thus far by claiming they aren't really trying. Like saying they aren't really trying, but they've lost 100,000 men is... Then I would really like to see what trying is. I propose to do it so that this conflict brings them a feeling of loss. So that, in France, if they send them here to destroy our citizens, Начали гибнуть французы. Uh -huh. В Германии начали гибнуть немцы. Uh -huh. Чтобы в Соединенные Штаты стали приходить грабы, накрытые звездно-полосатым флагом. Что мало желающих поквитаться с Фран... Соединенными Штатами в мире. У них просто-напросто нет оружия. А почему мы им до сих пор не поставили? А почему кто-то неведомый? Никому не ведомый. А не взорвал коммуникации, вот это которые можно вырезать, стратегически а важны а для Соединенных Штатов. Почему США? Нет, стоп, И, подожди, друзья, подожди. И вот тогда да. уже, вот тогда уже картина меняется зеркально. Да. Потому что уже тогда они будут думать, где красная линия, после которой они будут вынуждены нажимать на красную кнопку. А тут -то и начинаются переговоры. И вот тут та самая дипломатия находит компромисс взаимоприемлемый. Но Понятно. пока они не начнут гибнуть на Для этой меня войне, не которую они нам обидают. Я в дипломатию не верю, я верю только в Понятно, все, спасибо всем, спасибо всем. Что касается вот этой вот истории с нашим противостоянием, да, идти нам до конца или не идти до конца. Договариваться с ними бесполезно. Они обязательно выйдут на эти переговоры в тот момент, когда они поймут, что эта партия точно ими проиграна. Они пойдут на эти переговоры. В этот момент ни в коем случае нам не надо идти ни на какие переговоры. Нужно заканчивать а, и, а, те задачи, которые мы перед собой поставили и о которых мы знаем. I want to touch on the last thing he just said. That, there is, that they should continue to achieve the goals they set forward. But if I'm not mistaken, earlier in the episode, the same people inside of that room said they did not even know what the goals were in currently inside of Ukraine. So how could you achieve the goals if you don't even know what the goals are? I would also like to ask the same question to that gentleman, or ask the same gentleman a question, saying that they need to be sending Americans home in coffins? Like, where, where are you going to kill these Americans you speak of? A military base? Civilians walking around Europe? Not really sure he thought this one through, because hitting a military base and or a uniformed personnel would surely end up in a large-scale conflict outside of just sending more troops to, or excuse me, more equipment to Ukraine to help the Ukrainian troops. I don't really know where that one was going, but you know what? We'll, we'll roll with it because I have absolutely no idea where he was going with that one. Now shifting over to a little bit of mapping. Okay, the only real thing that happened in the northern region of the country was in fact the Russians have started to ramp up their attacks coming out of Kremina. All inside of this area right here. The Russians are attempting to push south and southwest. They have not made any advancements though inside of these areas all the way through here like we thought they might have been. I know they hit Tyranny. On the last episode, they were trying to push men all the way up north, uh, excuse me, northwest out of here. Nothing. They've not been able to score any ground. And they have increased the attacks significantly inside of this area. The big part that we're going to talk about, though, is going to be in the southern portion down here in Bakhmut. This area is getting pretty hectic. 
Okay, when I mean hectic, I think the next three to four days is going to be extremely crucial for the Ukrainians inside of this area. One of the biggest things to happen in, in like my eyes is the fact that Russians have been able to push across this main route right here. You guys see T0513. They pushed through last week. They've been back and forth, back and forth. But now they've been able to push through and take this chunk of uh, trenches, this trench line, okay, on the side of the hill the Ukrainians have been able to really utilize to their advantage. This right here is all hills, just for you guys who are know. All through here is all hills. So just imagine you're going up a hillside in this bottom piece where I have laid out these trench lines. These are all trenches right here, okay? You guys see these trenches? And they're, of course, facing the opposite way. That's when the Russians have been having some troubles getting across, okay, this, this road. This whole thing's been kind of difficult for them. But now they have entered, and it's not just the Russians. I'm talking about the Wagners. They have entered this northern chunk right here, and they're going to have the ability to push all the way south, which is kind of a big deal because look what's right here. We have this intersection. This intersection is going to be big. I think Krasnohora, there's a pretty big chance Krasnohora is going to fall, as well as giving Russians the ability to this, this three-way intersection, which is pretty much the lifeline to Bakhmut at this point. And I, I do recall, and I think a lot of you guys are going to remember me stating this, I would have hoped, it was about a week ago I said this, I think, maybe even longer, I would have hoped the Ukrainian, um, the, the, the leadership inside of Bakhmut have already started planning their exfil routes and have already started moving men out of here, prepping for the city itself to fall. And then I've already set up other defensive lines prepped and ready all the way through here. I hope I really do. I hope they have all the way along this because I myself sitting here, I knew that there was going to, it was going to come a time where it would fall. I just didn't know how long it was going to be. They've already been holding this off for a very long time. They've done a phenomenal job. They really have. They've inflicted so much damage to the Russians inside of this area. It is astounding. They have, I, I have to commend the amount of fighting they've done. It, it, it's been, it's been tremendous. Now the Ukrainians have also lost a little bit of chunk down here too, on the outside of Ivan, Ivansky on the Southern side of Bakhmut as well. We're about to, we're about to dive head first into the city itself. I have a little better map I could show you, but now they've almost reached the main route right here, a two zero five zero four that runs east to west. Now that is under it's under uh, fire currently and has been for the last three days. But now it, it possibly might begin under Russian control. I would say in the next twenty four to forty eight hours. Which, like I said, I'm really hoping that a week or so ago when I had stated it, the Ukrainians had actually started uh, with their exfil plans out of this area because it looks like this city is about to fall. Now, diving headfirst into the city itself, I have some more up-close map for you. They lost a little bit of ground on the southern side of Uptine, and the Russians are still pushing through here. But the main focus for the Russians right now is on this northeastern side of the country, or excuse me, the city right through here where I am. I'm actually lighting up, I guess you would say. Now, they have taken a chunk here, and they've actually pushed through the defensive lines here and here over the last 24 hours. So they are actively pushing a, a very large chunk of men, that is the Russians, through this area all at once. This is something we have not seen Inside of Bakhmut, as of late, we've seen them do it in Lischansk and Popozna and Mariupol and, and those kind of areas. But here, this is the first time we've seen them like take everything and just go all at once. I'm talking just one man after another after another, straight up cannon fodder style, old school. It's good. That's what's happening. They're overwhelming the Ukrainians area. But I'm telling you right now, the Russians are sustaining significant losses doing this. They really are. Like as I'm making this episode, I would it would not shock me. Like just in the last 24 hours that the Russians have lost upwards of 750 to 1,000 men just today alone. That's how brutal it is all along this line. I'm not saying the Ukrainians are taking uh, are losing men as well, but I'm really hoping that at the same time this is happening, they're now taking their defense line and shifting it back like this as the days go on to the hours go on so they can all exfil out of here and set up on new positions. I hope this is actually happening so those lines can actually collapse correctly so they're not leaving men inside of the city and everything just goes absolutely haywire that's what i'm hoping or i could be absolutely incorrect and the ukrainians are going to mount some crazy offensive on on one of the edges and force the, the russians back out of here i i really don't know i really don't i myself have been wondering why bakhmut has been held off for this long by the ukrainians they've done an absolutely phenomenal job phenomenal job holding this city off if anybody ever says they, they did anything like this is this is this is insane what they have done over the last what has it been three months i actually want to go back to my other map real quick three months i think it's where is it this one yeah look at this guys i just want you guys just to look at this this is over the last three months you guys see each one of these i'm just going to number them like this okay you guys see all these little chunks that are through here all those little tiny red chunks are not just days okay those are like progress the russian has made as they've moved through here I'm really glad that I, I didn't turn it into one big blob because it gives you an idea of how long and how much they've had to grind to get this back. You can see when they took bigger chunks 
Okay, bigger chunks, bigger chunks. But look at all these smaller chunks all through here. All these smaller chunks. It took a very long time, and they lost so many men in the process of doing this. Anyway, I just have to give them. I have to give them props because this is absolutely insane what they've been able to accomplish inside of here. I know the city is most more than likely going to fall, more than likely going to fall. But either way, they did a phenomenal job holding it, and they were just overwhelmed. And I have no doubt they have a plan because remember this happened in Izium. We saw this happen in Izium and Kupiansk area all the way through there. They blew through there. The Russians blew through there. The same type. Well, actually, it, it was faster than this. They blew through. They lost a whole bunch of ground. And then somehow the Ukrainians not only took it back, but then pushed them back significantly. And they've been stuck in the same area ever since. So we got faith. You got to have a little bit of faith. I mean, you got to lose. You can lose a few battles and, and, and still win the war. It's not that big of a deal. It's not the end of the world. Regroup, rethink. All's okay on the on the Ukrainian side of things, which we'll we'll see how this plays out. But thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I do I do I do enjoy you guys being over here. I will catch you guys in another episode here, most likely tomorrow. See you guys.